Okay, Mr. Tolbert, thank you for calling. Bye. Ernie. Hey. Come here, man. You know that case we got going with child pornography? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really heating up. Uh, let's go ahead and get Lieutenant in here, and we'll run over all the things that we have and see what he has to say. All right, just pass him the hall. Lieutenant. Okay. Yeah, man. I think he's still out there. Hey, Lieutenant, how are you? Fine, what's going on, man? Uh, you know that case Ernie and I have on the child pornography? Right. Uh, we've been working on this heating up pretty good, and what we've got, we've already had and done the search warrant for the IP address and email addresses. Mm -hmm. We verified that he has been uh, downloading child pornography right. and also redistributing them back over the Internet to different email mm -hmm. addresses. You know, He's been doing this for about six months, and uh, we verified who lives in the house. There's only three people. There's a mom and a dad that live there and also one son that lives in the house. Have you verified who has access to the computer? Yes, we did. We went over there the other day and did surveillance on the house between 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Uh, we verified that the parents were gone. They were at work between that time period. I just got off the phone with the SBI to verify if any child pornography had been downloaded in between those time periods, and they have been. Uh, numerous ch child pornographies on there. Great. Sounds like you're on the right track. I'd get up with the district attorney's office, make sure they're on board with you, and as long as they're good with it, let's run with it. Okay. All right. Yeah. See. All right. Thanks, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Ernie, if you'll call the DA's office for us okay. and set up a time when we can meet with them, and we'll go over there and discuss our case with them. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get a search warrant and also go ahead and get an arrest warrant, and we'll just go ahead and execute those two. That'll work. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ernie. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like a good case. Oh, thank you. Have you served the warrants yet? I haven't yet, no. Just let us know when you get the warrant served. Okay. You swear that the testimony you're giving the courts in this manner to be the truth, so help you God. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good, Sergeant Bird. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you. Have a good day. Yes, are you Miss Jones? Yes. I'm Sergeant Bird. This is Sergeant Lyons with the Sheriff's Office. Is Tommy at home? Yes. What? What's this about? Okay. We have a arrest warrant for Tommy and also a search warrant for your house. Wow. May we come in and talk to you about this? What is this about? I'll explain to you when we get inside. The arrest warrant that we have for Tommy is for downloading child pornography on the internet. And the search warrant that we have is to search for any computers, hard drives, or any flash drives that you have in your house. That, that's the only computer and equipment that we have here. Okay. If you'll have a seat while we go ahead and search the rest of the house. Sorry, Ray, it's clear on this side. I'm going to keep it in more quick. Hang on this side. You can see anyone. Okay. Any kind of computer. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Tommy, I have a warrant for your arrest. If you would, go with this officer right here. Please turn around. Okay, officer, be sure to read him his rights for me, please. Officers, wait a minute. You don't understand that my son has autism. Okay, thank you. Autism, what's that? I don't know, but we're sure gonna have to find out. Okay. No stop, give her the dollar. Oh yeah. Thank you. Poor, poor. Thank you. Let's go in the spa now. You like watching this? That's beach bed. Sunco Semi Awards. Okay, Faith. Mm -hmm. uh, 
do you know uh, that you have the right to remain silent? Yeah. So do, do you waive your right to remain silent? Yes. Do you know you have a constitutional right to not be questioned? <laughs> yes. Do you waive that right? No. You don't waive that right? Yes. You do? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you, you do understand that you have a right to remain silent? Mm-hmm. Do you, do you want to waive that right? Yes. Uh, just take a look at this KHBL TV in 1998. Just listen. Take a look. Yeah. So you just wave your... If, if the police were to come and talk to you... What the police would talk to me, huh? If they did, and they asked you to waive your rights, what would you say? Uh, that's, is that your right or your left? Well, so you'd waive your right then. But, uh, so then you'd feel it'd be okay to, to talk to him? Yeah. Would, would you want an attorney uh, there while you were talking to him? Mm, yeah. You would want an attorney? Yeah. You know you have a right to have an attorney present if you're being questioned by the police? Yeah. Yeah. And so would you waive your right then if you have the attorney there? You do waive it, okay, all right. Uh, do you waive your rights? No, well, I can. Uh, if they asked you if you waive your constitutional rights, would you know what that means? Yes, I don't know what that means. So you, would you say, do you waive your rights? What would you say? I don't, I don't know what I say. Okay, so you're not sure what to say. No, I say yes and I say no. What is autism? Autism spectrum disorders are increasing at an alarming rate in North Carolina, across the country and around the world. Autism is described as a neurodevelopmental disability. So that means it's neuro, involves the brain, and developmental means that it starts very early in life when the brain is still forming, still plastic, still changeable. And it involves differences and usually difficulties in three areas, social interaction, communication, and then the presence of narrow, repetitive behaviors, difficulty with change. Dr. Gary Mesibov is the director of Division Teach at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Teach is known globally for its pioneering approaches to service, treatment, training, research, and the education of individuals with autism. The distribution usually is found more frequently in males than females, usually a four to one ratio. Um, but there's a really wide range in terms of intellectual ability. We have people with autism with IQs below 25. We have people with IQs above 150. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Also, there's a emotional lability that very often goes with autism. So their emotions can change very quickly. They can become upset, scared, anxious very, very quickly or one minute be very anxious and then calm down quickly or, or vice versa. There are other things, other associated behaviors that you see very frequently. Terms such as low functioning will describe persons who will have a caregiver with them at all times and persons who may be nonverbal. They may use alternative communication, such as sign language, picture board or computers that speak for them. High-functioning autism, or Asperger's syndrome, are terms that describe persons who will be verbal and who will live semi- or fully independent lives. Just because a person has uh, aut autism doesn't mean that they're bad. It's just that they're not very, uh, they don't communicate as well as a normal person. Be patient and let give the person a few extra seconds to process the information and say, and say what they have to say clearly. 
everybody's different. And, um, you know, don't expect the same thing with one person as you might with the other. Um, you might, a good, one, one of my best advice is get, try to get on the same level as they are. Try to understand where they're coming from. Even though they may be able to understand where you're coming from, try to understand where they're coming from. They need to know about about autism. Um, they need to know about how fellows have autism. They need to learn it. Even touches them. DJ, Praveen, Warren, and Matthew are young people with autism. They too want judges, attorneys, and investigators to interact well with someone with autism. That's, uh, child pornography image. I think a lot of situations come up where they're their logic does not, or their ability to integrate different sources of information is more limited. That's just not what they're good at. They are more narrow. They look at one situation, they look at it concretely, and they don't always look at it in the context of trying to figure out what would be the different connections in that situation. How old are you now, Jonathan? Fifteen. How old? Fifteen. Fifteen. When? Fifteen. Okay, and uh, when uh, when did you turn fifteen? On my birthday. I think that also impacts a lot of legal situations. I would hate to see the experts being brought in, representing one side, and then trying to help that side to manipulate the person with autism in terms of getting him to understand things in a certain way. On the other hand, if somehow coming in as a friend to the court and trying to interpret, being a true interpreter and trying to make sure this person understands and, and maybe trying to ask questions in different ways or helping the people. And I think what they have trouble doing is conceptualizing, putting together information in complicated situation. I think they're are a little bit narrower. That was the third part of the definition, narrow, perseverative behaviors. And so they have trouble con have with context and figuring out how things get connected and what they mean. One of the criteria is what would a normal person in this situation do? Well, a person with autism is not necessarily normal in the way that they process the information and they put together the different parts. So that standard, what needs to maybe be modified a little bit to understand them and what what is a person who thinks like this person and who processes the environment what what might they be expected to do and what might they not be expected to be able to do is something that we might need to do sometimes Tommy are you comfortable there There's expert help for criminal justice professionals in North Carolina and around the country these friends of the court can be objective interpreters of the behaviors and communications of persons with autism. So perhaps this expert can help people understand exactly what the person with autism understands, but then also can help them understand the impact on some of the language they're using. You know, sometimes we use more um, abstract language than we realize that we realize that we're we're using. Um, and there's just so many things in life they can misunderstand in, you know, just they're trying hard, they're they're doing their best, the world is, is just complicated. Right? And then also not jumping to conclusions, not making attributions based on unusual or inappropriate behaviors. Remembering part of what autism is, it is a social impairment. That's really what it was named after, and the social is first. That's what I said first in the definition. So, And part of a social impairment is a lot of things you do look impolite um, and are not necessarily from the same motivation and the same understanding as a typical person. So, you know, you're approaching a person with autism and they run away doesn't necessarily mean they're guilty. It could mean you're flashing light and the noisy mall that you found themselves in has now become very confusing or distressing or answering some of these very concrete answers it doesn't mean he's avoiding your question. It means that he's asking, answering your question as he understands it.
Okay, Your Honor, one thing you might need to know about Tommy, he has autism. Autism. <clears throat> well, Mr. Jones, you've been charged with uh, possession of obscenity with intent to distribute. That's a serious charge. That's a Class I felony. Mm -hmm. I'm going to place you under a $1,000 secured bond with an additional condition of release that you be released to a guardian, caretaker, or your parent. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, Detective, thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. Tom, come with me. Your Honor, please, the next case is outside line number 45. It's the case of the state of North Carolina versus Mr. Tommy Jones. If Your Honor, please, the defendant's charged with possessing obscenity with the intent to distribute. He is on for a first appearance hearing. Uh, the state would also uh, like to be heard on bond at the appropriate time. Okay. Does he have counsel? Uh, yes, sir, Your Honor. David Daggett and Kim Taylor. We represent Tommy Jones. If Your Honor, please, in this case, <clears throat> the evidence would show uh, that the, the law enforcement seized from the defendant's home a computer that contained thousands of uh, uh, child pornography images. These, uh, had, this computer has been sent to the SBI lab for analysis, and we have just learned uh, just recently that uh, there's also evidence that some of these images were emailed out to other addresses from that computer. The state would argue and contend that this poses a threat and there's also the potential of additional charges being brought as the investigation is continuing and we would ask the court to increase the bond to $25,000 secured as well as to add those conditions about no contact and also lack of computer or having no uh, access to a computer. Mr. Dagg, in light of what the district attorney says, uh, you've got a problem. Well, y Your Honor, uh, perhaps it would help, although it's unusual under these circumstances to have testimony, we believe there's some special circumstances in this case that Your Honor might need to hear a little bit of testimony in order to properly set bond. Um, Tommy has a condition called autism, which makes him a little bit different than most defendants that come before your bench. And we believe that once you are familiar with Tommy, his autism, in his present circumstances, that you'll find that the release conditions as set are reasonable under these circumstances. I'll rule on the objections as they're made, Mr. Day. Yes, sir. Now, all right, call your first witness then. Okay, our first witness is Tommy Jones. Tommy, we, we need you to come up to the witness stand to give testimony. Tommy, before you sit down, you need to put your left hand on this Bible, and the clerk is going to swear you in. Do you swear that the testimony that you will give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. You may be seated. Hey, Tommy, you can sit in that chair. You need to speak into this microphone so that the judge can hear you, okay? If, if I may, Judge, uh, can I examine the witness from a little bit closer? Uh, due to his, uh, his uh, autism condition, communication and understanding for the court may be a little bit simpler. Are you telling me that because he's autistic, he can't hear you just as good from there as he can from back there? He can hear me as well, Your Honor. However, Tommy's communication is not the same as the communication between you and me, and we believe it will facilitate communication with the court if I'm able to question him from a little closer. Mr. Parker, you're standing. Uh, if Your Honor, please, I'd object to that as it's outside of court procedure. However, I'll abide by whatever decision Your Honor allows. If you allow it and it appears that it's not necessary, I would ask that the court have the counsel seated. Okay. Your Honor, we'd appreciate a little patience and understanding. This is an unusual circumstance for this court. Well, I'm known for my patience and Mr. understanding, Mr. Day, so I'll, in my discretion, I'll allow it this time. That's a, thank you, Judge. Tommy, can you tell the judge your full name, please? Your Honor, my name is Tommy Jones. Now, Tommy, ma make sure you speak into the microphone. Now, can you tell him your name again, please? Your Honor, my name is Tommy Jones. And Tommy, can you tell us where you live? Well, you're the judicial system. Why don't you look it up for yourself? Whoa. Whoa. Young man. Yes, sir. 
he asked you a, a legitimate question. Do you know where you live? Um, not really, so. Your, your, your Honor, uh, if you could give us a, just a little bit of patience and understanding, I think you will see that the responsiveness of the answers that Tommy's giving is part of the condition that we want you to be aware of in this hearing. So he wasn't being smart? No, sir, Your Honor. He was not being smart, smart with you or the court or any of the personnel here. All right. Okay, gentlemen, I've heard from your witnesses. Let's hear your arguments. Yes, Counsel sir, first. Go ahead. Y y yes, sir, Your Honor. We believe through the testimony of Tommy that the evidence has shown that the current bond and release conditions are certainly sufficient uh, in this situation. Uh, there are special circumstances uh, that I know Your Honor was concerned about. We hope we've demonstrated those to you. Additionally, Your Honor, we'd like to point out that taking Tommy is a practical matter. If the, if the bond's left at $25,000, he's not going to get out. So taking Tommy and putting him in a regular jail population actually exposes him to great harm and great risk, particularly with his conditions, and not being able to fully understand the situation. Therefore, we would suggest to the court that the current bond and the current restrictions are sufficient to protect the public and would appreciate the court's consideration of leaving those in place as is. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Parker. Your Honor, please, in this case, as I've told the court before, uh, the defendants brought up this issue of uh, autism. Uh, certainly it is bears greater looking at by the state in this matter. However, pending that time and the resolution of these cases, it's extremely important that the court remember that bond serves two purposes, not just the one for flight, but also the risk of harm and the commission of other crimes in the public. Mr. Daggett. Yes, sir. We would suggest to the court that the interaction that Tommy displayed on the witness stand is extremely consistent with a person who has autism and a person in Tommy's condition. Tommy showed no signs of other disrespect or other untoward behavior toward this court. With all due respect, Your Honor, there is not a risk of harm to the public with Tommy out on bond, and we would request that the conditions remain in place and that the dangers of him not being out on bond and being incarcerated in a jail population are much more significant and much more real. If you honor, please, as to the other conditions, if he makes that $15,000 bond, I would still ask that he be not have access to computers or internet and that he not be with children under the age of 18 without supervision. So ordered. If you honor, please, the next matter is outside line 50. It's a case against James Smith. I think if you spend a little time around people with autism and around somebody who understands autism, I think you can get a basic handle on some of these patterns. Hopefully, um, the main purpose of this, uh, my being here is to show uh, people in this video, especially in terms of law enforcement, uh, local, state, and federal, um, that there are different types of uh, verbal cues or verbal, uh, nonverbal information that people with autism tend to tend to do or say uh, uh, that you might want to c consider in terms of how you treat them in the, uh, in the justice system in all phases? You have to be respectful of their personal space and give them enough time to answer and don't, don't rush them or if they say something inappropriate, don't get offended by it. Being patient would be a, one of the best assets in the world to someone when working with someone with autism. That, and it, the reason, one of the reasons why is they have to process the information that's coming to you. I mean, coming to them. Right. Post a video. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. All right. The information in this video does not imply and does not suggest that persons with autism may criminally offend at a higher rate than the general population. Good job! Come on, do it again. Let's go for a walk. Push. No, guys. Do it! You can do it. Oh. Good 
Kids. The communications, behaviors, intent, and abilities of people with autism will vary greatly, and they will present challenges for criminal justice professionals. For the best understanding of this video, viewers are strongly urged to read the appendix before or after your viewing. The producers are grateful to North Carolina's judges, prosecutors, defense attorneys, law enforcers, and especially the persons with autism and their families for their assistance in the production of this video. Man, I, can't, well, I can't get it. You're jumping high enough, you're just not. Please contact the following organizations for professional assistance I can't get it. and objective autism related Dang. information and advice. Oh!